All right, so spawning up here on the top right-hand side of the map is our pink Protoss player. We have Dog Say Moo, probably Dr. Dragoon. Yeah, I think I think you're right. But <sighs> Dog Say Moo, whatever. Um, on the top left, we have Cappy J as our teal Terran player. And so this is another TVP. You're getting your uh, Protoss fixed tonight. I hope you know that. You know, I'm getting my entire Protoss fix from the lack of Protoss in Season 1. Yeah, that is true. We hardly saw any Protoss. It was like 99% Zerg. And we have hardly seen any Zerg in Season 2. But that Terran, though... I'm pretty excited to see uh, Cappy J play. Because last time... Or actually, uh, was it... Season... It was, it was uh, Season 2... Round 1, I believe where we saw Cappy J um, do a TVP, and he played that absolutely flawlessly. So we will see what he decides to do in this game against uh, Dr. Dragoon. Do do Dr. Raccoon. <laughs> Dr. Raccoon. I'll never you're get just, that right. I was going to say, you're just going to have trouble with that one forever. <clears throat> That's okay, though. We'll just call him Dog Say Moo. Or we just call him Dragoon. Or we could do that, too. That's Captain getting that scout. <laughs> what? I don't know. Fuck where the Daedalus. <laughs> oh, man. That map, man. It's... Daedalus is such a terrible map. And actually, looking at the uh, the players right now, Dog Samu going Nexus. Not Nexus first, but the 18 food expand. Being very ballsy. That That is still nexus first though unless I mean, uh it's technically 18 food because you can't i mean you can go like a true nexus first and go like 10 but he went nexus before gateway so that's like they still call it an 18 food expand <laughs> but say you're doing a 14 hatch 14 pool you call that hatch first because you drop the pool after the hatch now we're just getting into semantics don't be shitty <laughs> hey man so the gateway is coming down. We do have another assimilator coming out now as well. The, the reactor going off. down for Cappy J as well as that gas. So that tells me Reapers. I don't know about you, but... Uh, I'm going gonna... to take your word for it. Yeah, I think we're going to see some Reapers. And not to be, you know, not to be offensive to... Yeah, look, uh, two Reapers in production there. But but not to rip on Pixel Knight at all. But I think that Cappy J might use them a little bit better. But that's that's just my intuition. We do have a cybernetics core coming down finally for Dog Say Moo. And the other simulator did get dropped. The Nexus down at the natural is finished up, so he's gonna be able to start producing probes out of that as well. Double probe production, very, very good. Two Reapers are now finished and heading straight across the map. Oh my god. Right up into the ramp of Dog Say Moo. So uh Wow, okay, so that expand that that Dr. Agoon uh, completely was aware of that's yeah. uh, actually pretty lucky on his part Tried two reapers out on the map now no stalkers out there is actually one being chrono boosted though so uh, we'll see how much damage these reapers can actually do before that stalker gets out looks like they are yeah might be able to get a few oh they're are they gonna, they're gonna get surrounded no oh that was great uh micro there from dox to deny those reapers now they're gonna get chased by the zealot which is kind of like the old man chasing kids off of his lawn can't really catch them. Pretty much. I mean, <laughs> Zealots just really, they really don't compare in terms of trying to deal with Reapers, obviously, that Stalkers do. Uh, it looks like he's actually going to save that Reaper, so no losses there from Cappy J. Um, though he did get two worker killed. Not too many, but... And what's this probe doing down here in the bottom? Now we do see... Not okay, scouting. So that STV is going to get taken out. He actually does have two probes down here. I'm wondering if it wasn't for a hidden nexus and then realized that the SCV was there. Yeah. And these Reapers, again, going to get chased around the main, going to make it out alive. So does the Zealot. So now that we have two Stalkers and the Mothership Core, I would say that, for the most part, he is fairly safe from these Reapers. They'll look, they continue to kill probes here. But um, keeping that Mothership Core at home, he'll uh, be able to hold these Reapers off. Yeah, I would say that window of timing is just now closing. Uh, where Reapers are actually effective. There are two Stalkers out on the board, so really there's not a whole lot 
uh, Cappy J can do with those at this point. Yeah, but uh, you know, during that window of opportunity, he did get six worker kills. So I think these uh, two Reapers have paid for themselves. Though, are they gonna die here? I think at least one is gonna be lost here. There goes one Reaper and a planetary. The photon over jug uh, kills the second Reaper there. So now we see Cappy J just one basing like a boss, but he's got that second command center just about finished. So I take that back. I was a little bit too hasty to call that. Yeah, dropping that bunker and then landing the command center there at the natural. Definitely uh, something I like there, you know, building the command center in the base just to keep it a bit safer. Templar Archives on the way. And actually we see two more gateways getting thrown down. So a total of five. And as you said, that Templar Archives. I would say this is a really good lead up into Zealot Archon, just as a whole. He's not really banking that much gas, so he's probably just gonna go ahead and use the any gas that he gets for Archons and High Templar. Yeah, also starting those combat shields as well, getting on those crucial upgrades. Um, probably going to start to stim pack after that combat shield, I would assume. Dropping a starport as well. Um, two reactors on these barracks here. So just going to start pumping those marines and actually getting a tech lab on that factory. So I wonder, is he going to throw tanks in? Maybe, and we do see the forge coming out of... Uh, Dragoon. With plus one now on the way. And looks, charge just about finished. So actually it looks like uh, he's throwing Widow Mines in. Um, now he could have gotten that tech lab just for the Widow Mine upgrade, which I think he will need an armory for, if yep, I remember correctly. So uh, we will see if he ends up placing that down eventually. But for now he's just going to start uh, producing these Widow Mines. You know, generally less effective against Protoss, though I think, um, I don't think they actually nerfed the shield damage um, that they had earlier on in HOTS. Uh, we can check here, yeah. So it looks like they, they do 125 plus 35 versus shields uh, with the Widowmite spell, um, Sentinel Missiles. So it's not an awful call. However, I do think uh, Widowmites are definitely more effective against uh, Zerg in general, um, though it's fun to experiment with them and that's EVP. Looks like he yeah, just loaded up that medevac and is he going for the doom drop? Uh-oh. The doom drop, which is actually just out of range of that Zelnaga tower. It's not going to be the headshot doom drop, though. It's important Sadly. to keep that in mind. I know. Sadly, like, yeah. I would I like know. to see the, the one base double medevac. But look at these photon cannons. Definitely... Yeah, I do like <laughs> Doctor the positioning. Is all over that. Yeah, he just—it's almost like he just knew that was coming without even scouting it. Damn yeah, map packs, I, right? <laughs> I actually like the positioning, especially with that high templar. That's not something that you see a whole lot anymore, and that's I players leaving. Uh oh. Oh no! Bro, oh bro. no! Okay. At least for oh, and the widow mine even falls. And he's dropping Ooh. his marines down here. I don't think that's the best. Oh, okay, so he's just going to go for a full-fledged push right now. Which I don't think is actually a terrible idea. Now, there is one Archon out here and a few Stalkers at the back. But we, but don't, like even, was, we don't have Storm on the High Templar, so um, that's you know, less effective. I, at this point, I don't really think you need it. You're using the High Templars more so for feedback on Medivacs and to make the Archon. So I don't think it's really that pivotal of an upgrade, but I could see where it would have its uses. I think in this particular push, it could be useful. But like you said, I mean, there is an Archon there. And I'll, you know, probably another one here soon as these High Templars join. Um, the Zealots here, yeah, another Archon on the way there. So this is just going to get crushed. And Medivac actually, Cappy J, oh no. He doesn't have Stimpak, I don't think he noticed that. And oh, everything just gets annihilated there, that is absolutely awful. Yeah, that was a nice time warp by uh, Dragoon to go ahead and drop that down. And we do see a bunch of reinforcements continuing to stream down the map over here at the base of Cappy J. And look at this, we actually do have a Ghost Academy out on the map. And you know, after seeing these Archons, I think that's a good call. EMP could be so effective against that. Um, a lot of gateways gonna be going down here in the main for Dr. Agoon. And uh, yeah, I, I think he's just content to go with the Zealot Archon for now. You know, no Robo Bay. 
just going to keep placing down these uh, gateways. Get that third base as well. Finally getting those concussive shells as well as 2-2 two, two upgrades and vehicle armor. Level 1 being researched as well and two more barracks going down. Meanwhile, grabbing that third base. So Cappy J definitely trying to stay on par economically. Uh, Dr. Argoon is just slightly ahead there, getting that third base a little bit earlier and up to saturation a bit quicker. Um, as we can see, he is ahead on the income tab for minerals and gas and is actually uh, ahead by 20 workers. You know, looking at this composition from uh, Dragoon, I actually like it a lot because it's not very often anymore that you see players go uh, more Zealot Archon focused as opposed to Colossi. Uh, so much to the point where it's 15 minutes in the game before they even consider getting Colossi. You know, so I, I think that... I, I think, Go ahead. Oh no, I'm just saying I, I really like this play a lot. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that this could be very effective, especially when Charge uh, gets implemented, which it is. Um, but I think it's going to come down to Cappy J's EMPs, which he oh, actually no. has none here. And with charge, this is going to get absolutely annihilated. The Widow Mines do burrow. Are they going to get any hits? And no, they are not. Oh, they do actually take out two probes. Two probes, huh? That's really going to help him out in this engagement here. <laughs> and it's just going to stutter step his ass off, but I really don't think it's going to be enough. He is slightly doing damage to these uh, zealots. But, yeah, I mean, the Archons have not been damaged at all. Everyone's going to run him right. Ooh, nice connection there on the Widowmine. But Ooh. Zealots are just so beefy that they just, uh, they don't, they just eat up those Widowmine hits, even with the, the extra shield damage they do. Well, yeah, but it's also important to keep in mind, I think there is, like, a, the uh, the blast radius. Like, the farther away you are, the less it does. I don't know if that actually yeah. got implemented, yeah. but again, that was something that was talked about. It was implemented in the last patch. And uh, Cappy J is going to lose his third bus. <laughs> bus base. Third bus. Third base. And he does lose the ghost as well, so that is definitely not good for Cappy J. He's got a bunker back here though, so that's all he needs. A bunker and two widow mines, protecting both of the ramps there. But meanwhile, Doc Dragoon is content just to pull back four more Archons there at the third. He's just gonna get a lot of Archons there. And, and eventually the, the splash damage, especially with the two upgrades with three on the way, is just gonna be so effective against the bio ball from Cappy J. Those ghosts are just gonna be so crucial but it doesn't look like he's actually building anymore. And look at that, we actually have a fourth and fifth base going down for du uh, Dragoon. And we're getting Hellbats kind of thrown into the mix over here. I think that's an interesting <clears throat> choice. Um, I think they would almost play a similar role to the Zealots as a, you know, they, they stick in front of the, the bio ball and kind of soak up some of the damage there. Um, but at the same time, you know, they are biological, so they do take extra damage from the Archons. You know, I still think that's so interesting that the Hellbats are considered biomechanical. They could be healed yeah. by the Metabacks. Yeah, it's a very, very strange position. The, the only other are... unit in the game that's biomechanical is uh, an SCV. And the worker transfer coming down here for Dragoon. That Nexus is just about done, and I'm not sure where those scans... Okay, they're there. I think that Dr. Dragoon definitely has a, a hold on this game, though. You know, his upgrades are at 3-1 uh, one with one shields as well. 3-3 three, three is on the way for Cappy J, so he's still just sitting at 2-2. Two, two. Uh, he just isn't building the units that he needs. I do think very strongly that he needs those ghosts. EMP is going to be so crucial when you have this many Archons on the field. You know, they have 350 shields. You know, if you could just get rid of all of that with an EMP, that, that would be absolutely incredible. Um, it's going to do a lot more damage than straight up just A-clicking, but he also threw in a Colossus into the mix there, so that's just going to be a, a second Colossus as well. It's going to be a boost of damage, but Cappy J is moving up here to the third. Or I suppose, is that considered the fourth? Well, I think that actually be considered the third in this situation, even though he didn't take it third. Like, I would just consider that the natural third position. And you know, Dr. Agoon's army is completely out of place, but is he going to pull back and deal with this? Yeah, it looks like he is. At first, I thought he might have gone to base race it, but yeah, he snipes that Nexus and gets right out of there. Cappy J heading back home, but he's going to get cut off by this uh, death ball here. 
Yeah, and I actually don't think losing that uh, that oh, base no. mattered. Obviously, he's still on four. This is but... oh my gosh, everything is just getting annihilated because of Cap J. He is on the run. Really, I think his best bet would just be to pick up and boost out of there, but he's just gonna really cut his losses right now. I, mean, I guess he's gonna try and do what he can, but it's not gonna be enough. Yeah, we do get a small reinforcement wave and the Colossi flanking, but it looks like these Colossi are going to follow. At least yeah. one is. He picks up one Marauder and gets out of there. So, a little bit too late for that, but, you know, what can you say? Yeah. <laughs> one Zella being taken out by that Widow Mine. The bunker here is going to hold for a little bit, but it's going to fall here very shortly. This is just the, the A move from Dr. Argoon, and I, I believe he's going to take this game here shortly. Doesn't even need to replace that third base as well. Yeah. This is definitely his game. Just waiting for the GG at this point. That was very, very well played by uh, by Dr. Agoon. You, you kind of shit your pants here when you have Archons all over your base like this. Yeah, that's definitely not a good position to be in. Uh, not at all. <laughs> Oh, there's the GG from Capuchin. So very well done by uh, Dog Semu, aka Dr. Ragoon. Alright. What do you think about that overall playstyle we saw from our Protoss player? I think it was very, very good. It was very stable and obviously very powerful once you got up to that death ball status, but really what isn't powerful when you get up to that status. Yeah. Like I said, the main thing that really caught me and I think is something that I'm going to steal eventually is just using Zealot Archon that early into the game and actually just straight away teching into it. I know there for a while people were really skeptical to use it because it was a lot it was a lot more hit or miss than your typical death ball. Yeah. Zealot Archon is incredibly hard to deal with earlier on. Uh, I, I think it's one of those compositions that can actually match Terran in the mid-game before uh, you know before you get into the late late game because um, typically in the mid game you'll see uh, Terrans try to exploit the weaknesses of the Protoss gateway units earlier on but getting those Archons out quick definitely gives you a boost there especially with uh, charge zealots yeah exactly those are such powerful units so all right let's go on to, to game two which is on star station that is still loading I'm actually just starting to load, so I got I'm the, a little bit behind you, buddy. I've got the whole black screen thing going on. Nice. Takes an oh, extra that's... second to go. That's brilliant. Do you, you're on an SSD, right? You have a SC2 installed on an SSD? I have StarCraft 2 installed on a separate hard drive from an SSD because I don't like to destroy the write life right. of my SSD. Boot off the SSD, most of my games are on the HDD. Right. That is understandable. I personally have uh, StarCraft 2 installed on the SSD, and you can load shit up super duper quick. It's nice. Mm -hmm. But like you said, I might lose it a bit earlier than you. Well, anyway, it's been, been run for quite a while now, so I don't know. Where are we starting off? Looking at the bottom right. Okie doke. I'll set right, Woodhouse. I am ready to go. All right. Starting in five, four, three, two, one, and blast off. All right. So what we got here on the bottom right hand side of the map, which is Star Station Tournament Edition, we do have Dog Semu, also known as known as Doctor Dragoon, and spawning on the top left. In our teal trunks, we have Cappy J as our turn player, who is now down one game in the series. Definitely still has an opportunity to bring this back now that he has seen uh, Dr. Agoon's playstyle. So what do you think we'll see out of uh, Dr. Agoon this time? Sell an Archon again? It worked for him. Maybe he'll try it again. He can afford to lose a game. Yeah, you know, I think... In this case, I would rather play it like I did game number one and give myself that lead. And then if I was going to do anything crazy, do it in game three. That could be a good decision there, especially if you go um, 
If you win the second game, of course. Yeah. I guess at that at that third game, you can uh, afford to lose two games at that point. So. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're ahead after the second game, um, then you throw <clears throat> something kind of crazy in. Yeah. Like a, a cannon rush or do just do something crazy. Uh, cannons, DTs, skill rays, whatever the case may be. It's like pick Cappy, your poison. Yeah. Um, Cappy's actually going with this uh, similar refinery timing as that last game. And I'm getting up his barracks there at standard timing. So I wonder if we will see Reapers once again. Uh, you know, when you get gases early, it, it, it could indicate something like that. It could also indicate a factory opener, but I think that's pretty rare um, in TVP. So I, I expect we'll see some more Reapers here. Yeah, I think that's a pretty safe bet. It was something that um, seemed to work. Maybe a little bit better execution this time, but it seemed to work well last time. So he's uh, going with that initial Marine before dropping down a uh, reactor. So, well, actually, uh, queuing up a second Marine behind that, so maybe he's actually not going for the reactor. We do have a cybernetics core coming out for Dog Seymou, Dr. Dragoon. We're going to call him Dog Seymou because <laughs> I'm going to get confused if I try and do both. He told me that we'd just call him Dragoon. Oh, well, that works too. Actually, so he is going with the factory opener. That is uh, interesting. It'll be interesting to see if he actually goes with Widow Mines or if he goes straight into tanks. He is dropping that second gas there. So there's also the possibility that he is just going to bypass the factory and go straight into Starport. Um, that's another possibility that we could see. And uh, a Cloak Banshee opener could also be effective and catch your opponent off guard. Now, I'd just like to note something. We don't see any initial Zealot or... Stalker coming out of uh, Dog Seymou, our Dragoon. He did have something queued up and then canceled it in favor of putting down that Nexus after the gateway. Yeah. So, I mean, right now he's completely vulnerable to any sort of attack. Now, obviously, in this current age, we see a lot of Terran players who also like to fast expand and really don't apply much pressure this early on in the game anymore. So he's actually going to be completely safe at this point. He's not going to be able to get that scout, though. Um, that probe just getting shoot away. He does know his opponent is on one base, though. He doesn't know what's actually coming. We do see the tech lab go down on that factory. I can only assume that that factory is going to be lifted off, and then the start port will be dropped on, and then we'll see some banshees. So this is going to be pretty interesting. Um, it's been quite a while since I've seen a good um, cloak banshee opener or even just you know raw banshees without the cloak. Um, though he is getting quite a bit of gas here. Actually still sitting at one out of three on that right refinery. But yeah, it looks like, yep, there goes Cloak and there goes a Banshee. So um, this is going to be uh, pretty interesting. We'll see. You know, there is a Stalker out for Dog Seymou, but uh, we'll see if he's actually ready um, for the Cloak Banshees. We do have the Mothership Core on the way as well, so that could actually spot what's go uh, going on here in the Capuchet's base. If it doesn't get caught by these Marines, if Cappy J can catch the Mothership Corps with these Marines, he might be safe. And it looks like Cappy J sees everything. He has that Mothership Corps spots the Starport with the Banshee, so now he knows that that is coming. Now the question becomes, how do you respond to that? Now we do see a robotics facility coming down, so we're going to get yeah. that observer out. And he does actually have a couple of stalkers out now, just kind of spread around the side of his base. That was a great read by uh, by Dragoon, and I think it's definitely going to help him out here. Um, if he's able to hold off this Banshee, you know he's got a near-saturated second base, he's going to be ahead of the game here. Maybe we're, he's just going for that. Okay, never mind. There goes that uh, second base for Cappy J. I was going to say, is he just going to go for the straight up Destiny Cloudfist tank Banshee Marine push? But yeah, it looks like Cloak. There's the Cloak, and the Robo Bay is not quite finished, so we are going to see some probes die here. Three kills so far, four kills. And there's the fifth kill, six. So the, I think this is definitely going to pay for itself. Though uh, the Observer is being chrono boosted out, and there it is. It is finished. Seven kills on that Banshee. There's the Photon Overcharge. So yeah, this, 
Uh, this push is effectively done. Yeah, and that Banshee definitely caused some of the disruption and whatnot. It was it was well worth the a, uh, investment. I, I definitely think so. Seven kills. So actually, um, <laughs> we see Cappy J ahead on the income tab there. Them mules. <laughs> as well as gas, so his base is going to finish up here, and he will drop that over there, and really, I think uh, he'll have caught up to Dragoon there. Yeah, I definitely agree. Now, we do see a forge coming down. Going to start on those upgrades. Combat shields are on the way, as well as an engineering bay for Cappy J. Definitely going to start on those upgrades here. <clears throat> I wonder if he's going to drop down an armory and start on the, um, the uh, siege tank upgrades as well because it's going to be pretty interesting to see siege tanks here in a TVP. Uh, if we see a lot of stalkers, it could definitely be effective, but, you know, obviously uh, things like Immortal, which we do see in production right now, uh, could completely counter that if he gets a good angle when they engage. Though so he is leaving that starport on the tech lab, so I wonder if he's even going to throw in any more Banshees or just uh, really just leave that starport there for now. For now, excuse me. <coughs> yeah, and actually, thinking about Banshees just in a normal Terran ball, I actually feel like they're kind of underutilized. Especially with Cloak, pick off the Observer, that's just extra damage out on the field that your that opponent may or may not be able to deal with. Um... At that point, though, you do have to be aware of the observers and the possibility for multiple observers. Um, and, you know, uh, the Banshees do quite a bit of damage, but I wonder if, you know, that they actually do enough to make it worth it, because they are pretty gas-heavy. That's true. The scenario I actually have in mind is a later game turn where you've got, yeah. you know, enough medivacs out, you've got all of that stuff already. Dragoon spots this push coming with these stalkers out here. It looks like he, you know, he's got stalkers out. He's got an immortal, a few sentries and zealots. Uh, that immortal is going to be crucial here to deal with these tanks, um, but we will see how effective it is because this is quite a big uh, Terran force for you know 12 minutes in the game. Yeah, and actually supported by medevacs and also with those siege tanks, this is this is going to be kind of rough to deal with. Now there is one immortal out on the field, and a colossus is just about done. We also don't have blink. Uh, or charge, so our extended, extended thermal lance. Yeah, so these siege tanks, I think, will be a little bit more effective um, than they would be with those upgrades. Obviously, uh, sieging those up, and are we going to see the push here? And, yeah, the volleys begin, and the double nexus cannon. Or no, that's only one. For some reason, I thought I saw a second one up there. I'm like, that's ballsy. <clears throat> Ooh, and nice time warp. They're going to slow down the attack speed of those siege tanks, but the siege tanks. Well, they really four kills on one, three kills on the other. I don't really think that they're all that effective there. No, and actually between that time warp and the actual spacing of the Protoss army, that was actually a really good engagement by Dragoon. He didn't lose uh, the Colossus, but that's okay. I mean, he completely rewarded that push from Cappy J. Though if we check out units lost, despite losing that engagement, um, Cappy J still has less resources lost there. But I think in general, you know, Protoss units are a bit more expensive. So whether that's fair or not, I'm not here to comment on that, but <laughs> still interesting to note. That was a pretty big investment there that he, you know, really did lose everything uh, of. So it looks like, is Dragoon going to be on the aggressive side here? He's got that, uh, a Colossus thrown in there, a few more Zealots, or excuse me, Sentries, joining the ball here, and uh, multiple Observers, so we will have an idea of what's going on here. We do have a Siege Tank on the high ground, which I like. Um, we'll see where he decides to place the second tank here, protect them a little bit more from uh, um, <clears throat> from uh, the push from Dragoon here. Also dropping a Missile Turret to keep an eye out for those Observers. You know, I'm wondering if Dragoon didn't just forget about extended thermal lens because we still have yet to see it in production. It does have another Colossus out onto the field. That production tab is huge for Cappy J. <clears throat> well, nothing in production right now for uh, Dragoon. 
He's just completely forgoing that third base. Uh oh. There's one tank one. shot goes off. Two off. There's one stalker down. And this other tank is caught out of. <laughs> oh, so he does get the siege there. And ooh, the Colossus falls so quickly. However, sniping that tank off the high ground, and now the Kodos army is going to be able to clean up the rest the of The Immortal is still alive. That unit was not picked off in the early game. It's going to continue to work away at all these armored units. The Immortal is, has so many kills. Now he's up to nine kills right now, and it's pretty much still at full health there. And the reinforcement warp in. You know, I think this is GG for Cappy J. The tanks are just too volatile in a TVP situation. They get Immortals out, and it's just so hard to, to actually make them useful. And there again, we've got the uh, the cloaked banshee again adding its DPS. Like Will I said, it save I think, the day? Uh, you know what? I think it's going to make him at least back up a little bit. I don't think it's enough to completely stem the tide of this push, but it's going to make him at least back off for a second. Think twice about pushing in, and maybe wait for another colossus. Yeah. Well, Pixel Knight left us. He has to go stream now. So thanks for joining us tonight. Nice to see your games as well. If you're still here in the chat, if not, but I'm talking to a brick wall. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we see the army again down here. Excuse me, down here by the third of Cappy J. Cappy J thinking he's going to get a get an expansion, but he's going to be sorely disappointed here very very shortly. Yeah, we have level two coming in and here comes the push and it looks like dragoon is just content to sit on two bases right now and just keep producing units with the money he has just to try to put the nail into the coffin here will it work though that first tank dies all the zealots on the high ground are taken out i, I think cappy j is going to be able to hold for a little while yeah and i think he's going to hold for a little while but then it just becomes the war of attrition Ooh, you know, but he has no medivacs and he keeps stimming so that's going to hurt and he snipes the Immortal. Great job there. Drawing that Immortal with uh, into the tank fire there, and it dies. But looks like the Zealots here are going to take out the third base. Lift it off. There we go. Lift and actually, there was a lot of uh, useless deaths there in terms of uh, oh, but he loses the army. Base anyway. <clears throat> Got another tank on the high ground. Without an Observer, well, I actually does have two now. Um, he's not going to be able to see that if he didn't have those Observers. So it's definitely crucial. To have those in a uh, when you're facing against tanks, but uh, you yeah, know, he, he does, has no immortal right now. It's really strange. There's actually no robotics um, production at all coming out from Dragoon. But maybe he's just content to continue this, which maybe. is entirely possible. But at the same time, he does need some bulkier units. Yeah, <clears throat> the stalkers are definitely uh, going to take a lot of damage from these siege tanks. Uh, obviously, they do. Uh, 50 damage to armored units, and that is splash as well. So we've got a lot of stockers here that you know, they're going to take quite a bit of damage. And of course, the bio ball as well. Um, we don't have any upgrades as far as charge or blink, but we're going to see an engagement here. And he needs the guardian shield. Tanks getting some great shots. The one tank on the high ground dies. Oh, those are some good force fields. And the mothership core does get a time warp off, but it is going oh, to die. Man. Cappy J is holding so well. We have another reinforcement warp in the Zealots here from Dragoon. You know, again, though, there's no production of those higher tier units. He is content just to sit on two bases, and it looks like he's actually going to come up here and take a third. But at the same time, okay, we do have a Twilight Count for going down. I mean, yeah. like, he just, he's not producing anything to really back this up. And we do see a Colossus finally in production along with that third. And Cappy J also nailing down his own third, so he's going to be able to um, take an economic lead here once he switches some uh, some harvesters down there. He is also ahead on workers by 18. You know, that just goes to show that uh, Dragoon really felt like he could put this game away early on. We saw in that first game that he actually had a huge worker lead over Cappy J, but he hasn't been producing anything like that. He was producing pure gateway units and losing every engagement. I think he kind oh, yeah. of underestimated his opponent there. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I think he thought he had it in the bag when he kind of crushed through that engagement, but just good siege tank positioning and reinforcement waves from Cappy J. Definitely secured that second base. He's getting his third back. That third is holy mules. 
<laughs> That's six mules down on the map now for Cappy J, and he does have this small force sitting down here at the southern Zelnaga. <clears throat> so many mules. Cappy J, yeah, just gonna hang out there while he gets his upgrades. 3-3 three, three on the way as well as uh, um, ship weapons level one to help out those tanks. Three, three ship weapons, rather. And we do see a second Colossus finally out on the field now. I still, yeah, we still have yet to see extended thermal lands. And the siege tanks were sieged a little bit too late. He's running everything right oh, into the Zealous no. to take out that Colossus. You see how good this actually is. Both of those tanks falling. I really think like, that was horrible for Cappy J. He just got a little bit too excited there to take out those Colossi. At you know, the expense the of his tanks, almost all of his units. You know, at the same time, though, I kind of feel like Cappy J is still in the lead in this game because he is securing the fourth, and we still have yet to see extended thermal lance, and while we do have double robotics, yeah. it's not really going to make a whole lot of difference if they can't get that distance. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like Cappy J still has a hold on this game for the most part. However, you know, that was kind of a, um, kind of a careless loss there. Zealot, um, at, or Gateway units as a whole... Um, Looks like, okay, this, we have a Colossus on the field. Uh, they are at one armor, zero uh, zero shields and zero weapons. Meanwhile, our bile ball up here is at 2-2, two, two, so that is definitely a huge advantage for Cappy J. Blink also on the way. You know, yeah, I think I mean, Blink could be very useful for taking out the tanks, of course. Yeah, and I mean... you just Over the course of this game, what we've basically seen is Cappy J continue to be resilient and just slowly tack on these upgrades and things. He's just about ready to get 3-3. Just continuing to add all of those core units back into his bio ball and push it out across the map, crush any push that comes his way. And as you said, with uh, the Protoss player only being on one armor, this is going to be pretty sour. And we actually do have a fourth base coming down now for Dragoon. Also, good night, Obs. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. You are a new face, and we hope to see you next week. Or actually the week after that. Because I'm I'm gone next week. I forgot about that. Oh shit! You mean I get next Thursday too? Yeah. Oh my god. I come back Friday morning, man. Oh my god. Anyway, the fourth here for Cappy J just might fall, but meanwhile, this is a huge force from Cappy J moving over here to the fourth for uh, Dragoon. So it's just going to be a base trade at this point. Looks like uh, yeah, Dragoon's going to pull everything back, but not quick <coughs> enough. Yeah, and I mean, there's a few units back here for Cappy J to. He could recall. Him. Because he yeah. decided not to do that. He does have the Mothership Core there, so really he could mass recall, but um, he might get here quick enough to meet this before the third falls, but, you know, Bio just does so much damage, and it looks like, yeah, he's not going to be there fast enough. He's going to lose that third. Yeah, I'm surprised he actually didn't mass recall this, and actually I'm a little shocked and disappointed that didn't happen. No. Do you see Jeff? It's just a huge engagement here. Such a great spread from Dragoon, but this Bio Ball, those upgrades just do doing so much damage. All the gateway units fall. These uh, Colossus are soon to follow. No tanks left, but man, those upgrades. 3-3 three, three now, and there's GG for Dragoon. So there we do see the power of Bio. Definitely. Um, yeah, uh, especially with those upgrades. You know, generally you would say that, you know, throwing Colossus in uh, would make uh, the Protoss army just that much better against Bio, but you know, the tanks didn't do a whole lot, but they were, the, you know, they were... Uh, well, so it's a you know, support units there. I think the other thing he was definitely missing in that whole engagement was Storm. Yeah, yeah, your opponent's still up on upgrades, but use those Storms as not only a buffer, but a little extra damage, and I think those engagements you know, would have gone. I think after he was he was really on tilt there. You know, he felt like he could put that game away, um, you know, around the 15, 20 minute mark, or actually uh, probably around 15 there when he was pushing uh, the second base, had his opponent contained, but he just couldn't seal the deal and I think after that, you know, he's like, oh shit, oh shit, you know, I'm being pushed back. What do I do? And uh, we can definitely see that he wasn't prepared for this long game scenario because he really is only on one armor at the end of this game. Meanwhile, our Terran player was at 3-3 um, three, three bio and 1-1 one, one for his mechanical units. So definitely well done by Cappy J. We're going to go on to game three. These players are tied up. Was with Cappy J a pat on the back there. There you go. <clears throat> Able to avenge Pixel Knight in at least one game. Ooh, all right. So 
So game three, and it's gonna be on uh, Yansu. So we'll load that up. As long as everyone's ready, nobody needs to take a dump or something. No, I'm I'm good to go. No, cool. nope, I'm set. Nice. Still have a lot of people hanging out with us tonight. Once again, you know, nice to see you guys. And if you haven't already, hit the follow button. We would love that. We, uh, we're here every week, every Thursday. Except it's, for next week. Yeah, except for next week because <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm leaving. You're killing esports. I am. I'm, I'm terribly sorry for that. So. You don't sound sorry. I am. You I'm, don't sound uh, sorry. Can to you see my face right now? Can you see these tears? You don't sound sorry for being one of those people going to Hawaii. Come on, man. It wasn't voluntary. My parents, they, they drugged no, me. No, it was voluntary. They did. They drugged me into it. I promise. No, it was voluntary. I had uh, I had the option to say no. And I, I did say no at first because that's a lot of money, man. That's a, that's a lot of money for a plane ticket there. But they convinced me. And, yeah, it, it happened. And I can't really back out of it now, you know. So if I, if I could, I would. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. <laughs> Uh, somebody can see through my bullshit. He wouldn't. Right. He wouldn't because because <laughs> Hawaii. I mean, come on. That's true. He lives in Montana in the middle of winter. Uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I don't blame him. Uh, you should see Michigan. Yeah, Montana's awesome. Right? Montana's <laughs> awesome. So, uh, are are we good to go here? Are we ready to start? All set in the bottom left, waiting on you. Okay, let's give give us that countdown, man. All right, starting in five, four, three, two, one. Blast up. All right, so spawning down here on the bottom left-hand side of Yansu, we do have Dragoon. Spawning as the pink Protoss pieces. He's currently tied. Tied yeah. in the series. Wow, it took me took me a second there. You were just going to be biased and say he was up two games because he's Protoss. I see how you are. Nerf, anyway, nerf Protoss. Exactly. Uh, on the top right in our teal trunks, we have Cappy J, the Terran player. Able to uh, break out of that containment in game two and uh, go for the win. And now he's tied up against his Protoss opponent. We'll see who can take away game three. You know, one thing I noticed last game is we did say, or we did see, excuse me, Dragoon go for something that um, classically I don't think we've seen him go for in the last, uh, last couple games in this series or the last round. I think he was very, very set in his uh, Zealot Archon play. And I think that's honestly something he needs to go back to if he wants to regain the Yeah, I mean, it was clear, clear that his strength is in that later game. You know, I think he just got a bit too overconfident there. And uh, you know, after winning one engagement, felt like, hey, I can just reinforce this push and go at it. And, you know, it almost seemed that he was going to take that game away. But, you know, with the, you know, those two tanks on the high ground... And we're able to uh, keep Cappy J in the game and ultimately, you know, breaking that containment won him the game. And so, yeah, I, I do agree. We should see Dragoon go back to a more macro style of play as opposed to, you know, trying to crush the Terran earlier on, you know, off of two bases. So I would like to see another Zealot Archon opener. Um, out of Cappy J, I would also like to see, uh, you know, it, it's obvious that he didn't like his tanks there. Um, I don't typically go with tanks in TVP. I'm usually... Um, more about, you know, kind of just exploiting the fact that Protoss army really isn't that mobile, so drops can be really effective if you, if you uh, take care of them. Yeah, exactly, and one thing to note was, at that point he was so far ahead in upgrades and things like that in that game, it really didn't matter how he engaged it because he was still being able to replenish enough to cover himself and then push forward with small forces. And eventually it was enough of those small forces that picked off everything that gave him the lead. Yeah. We do see that reactor on the way for Cappy J as well as that gas. So, you know, what's that tell us? <laughs> have, you, have you learned something about uh, about Terran play? 1A, 2A, 3A. No, victory. no. What? Reaper. Oh. <laughs> We do see the Nexus coming down now for Dragoon, as well as the Mothership Core coming out. Not the 1A. Come on. Add on. Complete. It's always 1A. Whether you want to believe it or not, it is 1A. 
1A your way to victory. Well, we'll, we'll see this game. We'll, we will judge based on this game if Terran is the 1A race. Uh, I think a sample size of 1 is a bad idea. A, a sample size of 1 is just fine, man. I took stats to 16. Come on. <laughs> Go. So did I, and they told us it was bad. <laughs> He's actually not the Reapers. I'm apparently a retard. <laughs> see, I told you. Oh. 1A, 2A, 3A. <laughs> That's all you need. But in game one, he built the reactor. He built the, the gas at the same time, the reactor at the same time, and he went for Reapers. But yeah. That's true. But we do see two more barracks coming out. And He's going back. for the three racks. He's going for the three racks all in. So now out of Dragoon, we see a robotics facility again for those early... Early uh, Immortals? Observers? Sorry, I was reading the chat. N equals one is perfectly acceptable. Exactly. Um, it depends on which field you're in. I know in mine, but, hey, somebody hey, would shit a brick. Just just take a minute to admire what we are seeing out of Cappy J right now. We are seeing the reactor on the first barracks, the tech lab on the second barracks, the reactor <coughs> on the third barracks, as well as plus one coming out of this engineering bay here. Uh, this is going to be a three rack. Like, uh, we do say, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, this is, that, this is three that's racks, my guess. Man. That's my guess. It's the planetary fortress push. He's just pumping so many bio units right now, getting combat shield. You know, uh, the way I would do it, I would have uh, you know the third barracks with the tech lab to go for concussive shells. Meanwhile, getting stim pack or concussive shells, or I mean, uh, combat shield off of the uh, the first tech lab. But you know, he's just pumping all sorts of bio units right now, and I think we're gonna see a push pretty soon here. You know, Dragon you know, had his mothership core up there. I was going to say, that's going to be kind of devastating. Now, he does know exactly what's going on, but looking back over at Dragoon's base, he's on two gateways and a robotics facility and getting his robotics bay. So, I mean, at this point, he's going to have Colossi really, really early. He does have that expansion up and running, but he's not going to have enough units to back this up when this push yeah. finally does come. You know, and it should come here very shortly. Um, this is about the time where I would push out around 7, 7.30, uh, around the 59-60 supply mark. Um, but yeah, we are going to see that early Colossus, but not enough gateway units to actually back this up. And here comes the push right now, though I oh, think something we're going to see is how effective Photon Overcharge actually is at holding off early pushes. And uh, He's also going to have to be kind of careful about which direction he engages this from. Obviously, the Observer here oh. is going to see it, but... Yeah, over there on the Zelnaga, that probe does uh, have a complete view of what's going on here. He's pulling back the Mothership Core. Uh -oh. He's got two Stalkers. <laughs> One Colossus not even halfway done. Actually, oh, just about halfway terrible. done. Oh, no. He's got the Photon Overcharge. He's trying to sandwich the Terran. He loses everything. And, oh, no. He's just going right into the main to get out of range of that Nexus. Pretty good move, actually. Is, is, is he going to snipe? He's going to snipe the Colossus. Oh, okay. Looks like he's trying to. He's trying so hard to get that Colossus. And does he get it? Does he get it? He's going to go for it. But oh no. He's losing so much of the Stalkers while he's trying to A-click on that Colossus. And it looks like... Actually, this push gets gonna deflected. Hold. Yeah, this push from uh, Cappy J gets deflected. I really <laughs> think if he had got this impact with four combat shields, that would have ended it. And the Colossus lives... To fight another Holy day, shit. Have that five Colossus kills on him. 16 health, hardly any shields there. Wow. And round oh. two coming across the map. Tythor in the chat. How's it going, man? Nice to join you. Tythor. Hey, buddy. Welcome to the chat. But yeah, the, the second wave from Cappy J is going to have uh, Stimpak and possibly uh, plus one armor behind it, but I think he might push four Stimpaks actually done. Um, it's 30 seconds on that Stimpak. Yeah, I was just going to rally there. Or decide just to go right in, and this is just going to get crushed. Well, but I mean, like, it all depends, really. Because, I mean, yeah, the Colossus is here, it's and he's got up. probes. Well, yeah, just, you I, know, agree. I don't think he should have actually pulled all those probes. Um, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure he should have pushed there. Now, obviously, yeah. with that Colossus out, that kind of changes how you feel, like, in terms of mindset. Well, he now has to impact and plus one. <laughs> Uh, concussive shield, shells, shields. <laughs> concussive shields is now on the way. So, but it, it, he just definitely has a lot of stalkers out right now. So he's a lot more prepared for this sort of thing. Is he gonna snipe? There, the Colossus falls. So he gets that Colossus. There is a second one though on the way. Mothership core falls. There's no more photon overcharge. 
but there is that second Colossus, and that is going to scare Cappy J out for a little while. But looks like he, he has everything rallied down here, so he just wants to continue this push. Yeah, I mean, he's just. Does he get the second? Oh, no, no, it's so. Yes, he gets the second Colossus. But everything else does. You know what? That's okay, though, because he keeps resetting his opponent's uh, Colossus calendar. Now, the the bad part about this is, is Cappy J lost all momentum that he had. I would have actually liked to have seen him wait for another war, uh, round of units before trying to push in. Yeah, I, he definitely did not do enough damage to actually bring himself ahead in this game. Yeah, he sniped both of the Colossus, but he lost everything. Like you said, lost all momentum without really doing a whole lot of damage to the worker count. So, you know, Dr. Agoon is quite a bit ahead. He's at 45 probes to 31. Um... So yeah, I mean, Cappy J is completely saturated. Uh, one more SCB and he would be oversaturated here at his main. He's got two in production. He needs to expand here if he wants to stay in this game. I don't think he can make it off of one base. Yeah, and I think at this point with that momentum sufficiently halted, I, I want to say this game is not going to end well. Like, I think it's going to go in Dragoon's favor. You know, he <laughs> keeps producing units, but... The thing is, Dr. Dragoon can produce units quicker due to being on two bases, and also those higher tier units. And he also has the Templar Archives on the way um, after... Well, okay, wait, he's got his Robo rallied all the way up here to the natural. That's interesting. What's... Okay, yeah, that's a... Uh, that must have been a misclick. Yeah, that's a little interesting. Um, I mean, during the beta of Wings of Liberty, we did see the Scouting <laughs> Colossus make more than one appearance. We've but... seen that out of Scipio before as well, so that shouldn't be all that, that unfamiliar. That's true. Let's see, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if he even notices it. <laughs> We're going to follow this only okay, Colossus. Oh, man. Okay. That would have been fantastic there. And, um, two Archons being morphed in, so he's definitely got those higher, more powerful units, but this is a big coming from Cappy J. And we do see this third base from Dragoon getting uh, thrown down over here. But, you know, uh, Cappy J is just one base and like a boss right now. He's still far behind on the supply. If this push <coughs> dies, he loses the game and that's it. But can he hit for... Oh, no. The third gets canceled and it looks like he has nowhere to run. Uh-oh. This is going to be absolutely awful for Cappy J. With the two Archons doing a number as well as these Colossi here, everything is being vaporized. Yeah, this is no good, and we actually do have the rally set down here to the Cell Magatar, but it's not going to make any difference at all. That push does get cleaned up, and as you said, this is yeah. this is a pretty sad day. I have been in this position before so many times back when I was uh, initially getting into the game, you know, because the, the three racks was my go-to build, as I've said before. And, you know, if it doesn't work, you don't really know what to do. You know, if you don't do enough damage to actually feel like, hey, if I keep rallying, I'll be able to eventually kill him off. If he, if he does that at this point, each push is going to just get completely annihilated. Um, yeah, and we do have another Archon in production. Now, we do have level 2 weapons coming out of Cappy J. The Doom Drop. The Doom the doom Drop. It's going to get caught, though. Is it going to get seen? Yes, it is. But he has nothing that can shoot up. <laughs> nothing close enough, that is. And he boosts it again to get away from those uh, stalkers there. But, you know, obviously, Dr. Dragoon, uh, feeling confident in this push, realizes, you know, that's that's a medevac full of units that he doesn't have at home, and he's already on one base, so, you know, really, what can he do? Meanwhile, has uh, Photon Cannons at home to protect from these drops. Definitely good. And the push from Dr. Dragoon, well, this is definitely, as we said before, is not going to end well for Cappy J. Three Colossus here just moved completely destroy all this bio here um yeah this is going to be gg here fairly shortly and we do see this little push down here in the the main base of dragoon but he really doesn't care he's kind of like the, the colossus Avengers. the colossus survives with one health you see that nice wow five Such kills and one health <laughs> and playing ring around the command center up here take care of these weapons this is all he's got left. This is his lifeline. Three Marauders and four Marines. Which one's Billy Jean? Um, I don't think it matters. I think they all are. <laughs> They're all gonna die. Oh, yeah, no. I don't think there's a whole lot of option here for our uh, our Terran buddy. Cappy, Cappy J. J. Yeah, he's just Jackie Chan. What? I said Cappy J. Oh, Cappy J. I thought you just said Jackie Chan. No. Wait a minute. There's the GG. Cappy J losing. With that, 
Dragoon pulling back ahead in the series. Zerg wins, huh? Zerg wins. Don't know if I believe that. It's true. Just don't think about it. That's true. Okay. That's all right. Take your word for it. And that's that's all you got to do. You just got to trust me. All right, let's, let's go on to game four. Hold on one second. Okay. We shall hold on then. Oh, man. Ugh. No. Misspelling my password is not fun. Hey, Zero. You didn't leave on me, did you? Yes, I did. Oh. Alright. This is only a figment of your imagination. Really? <laughs> yes. You're, you sound very convincing right now. <clears throat> What's convincing? What am I... Ah, uh, nothing. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a when, when doesn't that happen? <sighs> when I don't have coffee. Girl, look at that body. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no. Why do we have to go down that path? <laughs> you guys were breathing heavily, like... You know? It's more of a sigh than anything. <laughs> okay, three is like okay. really creepy. <laughs> yeah, you can stop that. Yeah. No tears, only dreams. Tears. All the tears. <laughs> okay, so I'm ready to begin game number four between Cap J and uh, Dr. Ragoon. As am I. We're waiting on zero. Uh, not yeah. quite yet. No, that's fine. Man, kill an esports zero. I loaded it late. Behind the rest of us. Man. Hey, maybe it's because I'm the... uploading a lot of video right now. Oh, that that could be it. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what the stream thinks. <laughs> You're gonna ask the, the chat. Probably want the chat. Probably wants dog cam. Let's be real. We ought to uh, replace zero now. What do you what do you say? He keeps uh, <laughs> lagging behind here. <laughs> uh oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's okay. Uh-oh, what? I heard... What? I heard, yeah. I heard that little shit. What's he up to? Oh, he's just sitting on my lap watching StarCraft. Okay. That's the mic, Ewok. <laughs> alright, alright, I'm ready. <clears throat> yeah, I'm all set. Top of the map. Top of the map. Good to go. Alright. Alright. Count down. Count us down in five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay. Spawning on the top of Polar Night Ladder Edition here in game four, we have Dr. Ragoon, our pink Protoss player, who is ahead 2 1 in this series. And his opponent spawning down here on the bottom side of the map, we do have Cappy J, our teal Terran player, currently down 1 2 in this series. So, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, Dr. Ragoon there saying, I'm not going to have none of your shit. That's right. You beat me in game two. I'm not going to let that happen again. Completely destroying that three racks all in from Cappy J. Now, if I was doing that three racks, I think I would have won because my three racks is flawless. You know, what do you, you've experienced that before. What do you say? Considering that was two years ago. <laughs> hey, man, I've only improved. Right? No. <laughs> if I was devastating back then, I'm I'm just absolutely awesome right now. And I'm actually bullshitting right now. I don't know how to play this game. I'm I was gonna say I I don't know if I believe that. I've I've seen your ladder escapades. Yeah. Uh, last Friday I <clears throat> played what like four games as Zerg on the ladder and lost every single one of them. I think I should stick to Terran. I'm not very good at Zerg. Nerf Protoss. Exactly. So, coming out of Dragoon, we do have the first gateway in kind of a strange spot compared to normal, but... I'm like game. lightning, huh? <laughs> oh, man. You guys. Zero, me too. I'm Protoss. Protoss Brothers. Protoss Come on, Brothers. so many Protoss players. We even have Nation92 who switched over to Protoss. What gives, man? I know he did. He was trying to ask me for help earlier, and yeah, buddy... <laughs> He's asking to, for help, too, and I'm like, to, I uh, can't help you, too. Nation92, if you're still in the chat, send me a message on Facebook again. 
answer like answer my other question, then I'll be able to help you a little bit more. Your original question was just really vague. But Cappy J going with that Reaper. Not the double Reaper. He doesn't have that reactor, but he is going with the, the initial Reaper there. So we'll see if he's able to make that work a little bit better. This probe just might see that come out if he keeps it alive long enough. Just a few more seconds on that Reaper, and I think I think this probe might be able to see it. Oh, but is he going to get up there quick enough? And the probe... Uh, okay, so he just barely catches that Reaper heading out there. Um, he does have a Mothership Core in production as well, so that is actually going to be able to keep that initial Reaper out. Chrono boosting that bad boy out. Just to make sure it's done before that Reaper gets there. And it will be. There it is. There we go, so he is now protected from the Reaper harassment. For the most part. Oh, we actually... Yep, there's a... Uh, is he going to put down the... Uh, if that's right, they don't spawn in, with enough energy, obviously, to, uh, to do a photon overcharge, but... I guess uh, that little pea shooter repulsor cannon is enough to do the job for now. Ewok, it's okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Your dog's being awful right now. I'll, I'll be back. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> so, it officially happened mid-game this time. I don't know if I can forgive you, Woodhouse. That's all right. We do see Cappy J dropping down that uh, natural expansion inside the base, of course. Keep it a little bit uh, more protected and away from enemy eyes. So a little over halfway down there. Meanwhile, Dr. Ragoon also dropping down his own Nexus. They're at the natural. A little bit behind, but not too far behind. Just staying on par for the most part. The Reaper continuing to be pretty annoying here. Um, not really getting a whole lot of kills. It only has one thus far. And there he goes, the Stalker, so it looks like uh, this is just going to completely um, make this Reaper pretty much useless. It's going to plug away at this Nexus a little bit, but of course, not going to do too much damage at all. When it gets out of there with 8 health, of course, with combat drugs, that's going to regenerate there. Meanwhile, a factory going down for Cappy J, as well as that second gas, so I'm wondering if he's going to go for the tanks that we saw in game number 2. Now, there goes that tech lab. Um, there is no uh, starport behind this. Obviously, you know, he doesn't quite have the minerals yet for that, but we'll see if around 150 drives decides to drop a starport. Um, I do think that he's just going to go for the tanks. Since uh, that seemed to work out for him in game two. You know, he's backed up against the wall at this point. Yeah, and there's that tank. If he does lose this game, he loses the series, of course. So uh, for now, I think he's going to stick with what he knows, and he's going to go with that tank and uh, drop that natural expansion there. Meanwhile, the, the Maynard from Dr. Ragoon filling in some probes here at the Natural Expansion. It's mean, meanwhile, uh, two gateways going down as well for a total of four, as well as that Robo Facility. Yeah, and let's see, we see the expansion from Cappy J going down. We do have a bunker going down at the front to try and secure that just a little bit more. And the dog is back, apparently. Oh, of course. Cat. I thought he would have... <laughs> I thought he would have been fine once my roommate got home, but I will have to take him out in between the series here. You thought he was a goner? I thought he was a goner. I thought he would have been okay, but <laughs> he's going to have to hold on for a few more minutes. <clears throat> so now we do see the third assimilator coming down for uh, Dragoon and a robotics facility on the way as well. So everything pretty standard to what we've seen in previous games from him. Yeah, I mean, I'm expecting at some point uh, the Templar Archives to go down. Um, I don't know. Actually, is he just going to go straight for the uh, Robo Bay? He might just be doing that. Um, you know what? That might be entirely possible, and it would be nice to see him go just directly into the Robo Tech path as normal, as opposed to um, having yeah. everything else added in. It would be kind of a very old school flavor to it. And he does like the his uh, stalkers thus far. He, you know. Obviously, to deal with that earlier Reaper, and look, there, there goes our Robo Bay. So we're not going to see um, the Twilight Council for Blink or anything like that. Looks like it's going to go straight into the Colossus Tech, which, uh, like you said, not uh, a bad choice at all. It worked out for him. He's got a Scout Phoenix here as well. You know, I like this coverage from uh, from Dragoon. He's got the Stalkers here on the Zell Nagas, and he's sending out a Phoenix here to check out what's going on. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, again, it's another perk of having Hallucinate not be something that's researched. You see people use it for things like this a lot more than they used to. It's a lot more viable now than it used to be, so yeah. that's always And the Immortal on the way for Dragoon. And uh, it waits to be seen if he's going to go with Extended Thermal Lance. He should be getting that soon. Um, you know, he remembered to get it last game. I would assume he would remember to get it again. I think that was just a fluke in game number two. Yeah, there we got it. Yeah, I agree. Um, definitely a, a mistake there. And that, uh, what, game three? G game two? Uh, one of those games. Game two. Yeah, game two. Yep. Um, and yeah, it looks like we're going to see an engineering bay and armory go down for Cappy J to start those upgrades. Um, he's got plus one attack just about finished up for his bio ball. Uh, he's going to start armor and uh, perhaps uh, attack level two as soon as this armory is finished up and then start getting those upgrades for the tanks, which, uh, yeah, he is going to send out here across the map, though uh, Dragoon has complete knowledge of this because he did have a stalker there at that Zelnaga. We do have an Immortal on the field, but uh, we'll see if uh, Cappy J is actually going to go for the contain here. I think he might be able to pull it off as long as he can take out uh, that immortal and he is careful but we do have a colossus out and extended thermal lance is just about finished two more immortals are going to be finished here and definitely a good call from uh dragoon here these immortals are definitely what you need to completely counter the siege tanks here captain j is scouting for some oh, some expos but oh no oh uh -oh. no uh oh he's gonna get caught right here he does get caught, and we do see the tanks oh, sieging up no. late, but I think it's going to be enough because so they're target firing these zealots. Yeah, everything just getting crushed oh there. That is not God. what he did there. Definitely just got caught with his pants down. Absolutely not what he wanted there. Yeah, that was... 20 that was just, minutes lost, or resources lost. Sorry about that. Yeah, that was definitely not what he wanted to have happen. He sieged everything really late. Oh, no. And then that oh, Colossi, no. with the time warp, everything just went oh. south from there. He just... Puts everything in the medevacs and hauls ass out of there, hits his boosters and goes, leaving his uh -oh. natural completely exposed. Is he is he gonna attempt a base race here? I don't really see why he would do that, but You know what I think he is, but I mean, yeah, that's that's a terrible plan. I mean, he could just lift off, I guess, and kill these stationary buildings of the Brodos player, but everything at home is just being completely destroyed. Meanwhile, we do have a drop here, but there are two immortals which could possibly uh, assist dealing with this. But it looks like they're rallied way out in the front, so they're not uh -oh. going to give any help right now. What What's going on here? We, he stopped the push, and it looks like he's going to head back home, but at the same time, why not just mass recall down to the, the natural? I think maybe has he forgotten about mass recall? You know what? I think that's entirely possible. Ooh, now, wait, did he actually lose? Uh, he might have lost No, he, he actually... Back. No, he mass recalled the Mothership Corps back, didn't actually take any of the army with him. The Mothership Corps did die in the main base. Oh, And no. now he's just... He's set to basically just deal with this with warping. Uh, I just don't think this is going to be enough for Cappy J. You know, everything is being pulled back home. It will be able to deal with this unless he lifts off and goes to the third or something and just pulls the Protoss player around. Like I was saying before, the Protoss army can be really immobile when you don't have uh, a mass recall, but obviously everything here is just getting cleaned up. And actually pulling the probes to try and corner this, and they do get lifted up and everything is going to survive. Meanwhile, he's got 45 workers. That's saturation on the base in the main there. You know what? I, is this saturated? That is the question. Uh, Kappa. That's, that's debatable. Kappa. Definitely. He's getting there. <laughs> if not, he is definitely getting close to saturation. Yeah. 24 out of 24. Looks good to me. Now he's saturated. Wonderful. If he wasn't Wonderful. before, he is now. That's right. And, uh building a third command center as well as a, a well a lot of barracks there <laughs> i was gonna say, just... <laughs> i don't i don't know that this is going to matter though we do get the army from uh yeah. dragoon That's pushing out across the map especially with four immortals and that colossus provision on the high ground tanks are going to be absolutely no object here this is absolutely going to fail for cappy j i don't think he's going to be able to hold yeah i really don't either this is not a good position to be in now the tanks do siege up. Again, another force field going to come through and try and block stuff off. Very good, very oh, well placed. Everything just being completely destroyed there. Tanks now falling to the Immortals. This, this is, is not good. 
Not good for Cappy J. Protoss imbalance. There is one tank still firing away up here. He only has one kill. You know, that's what happens when you try to kill an immortal. That's a huge tank. It's not gonna work. Even without the shields, the tank like four hits to kill. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is definitely not good for Cappy J. That base destroyed once again. Um, definitely gonna be a GG here shortly. Sadly, it didn't work out. <laughs> Not much left to say at this point, Cappy J. Cappy J. He tried very hard. Dead Frogs has arrived. I have arrived. Hold the applause. <laughs> What did you miss? Well, you missed this entire series on Cappy J versus uh, Dragoon here. Obviously, this is a uh, this is game four, and Cappy J is clearly going to lose this. Sadly, I was rooting for I, I our turn, say buddy. Clearly. I mean, give him the chance. What? Well, what's give your him point? The chance. Give him Under the chance. Under what circumstances could Cappy? There's a GG. So. Okay, um, that's all I was asking. Just <laughs> give him the chance. Wait for the GG. Don't.